For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. As someone who doesn't have any particular religious beliefs, what, why for you is there that sense of sadness at the idea that, that humans might one day go extinct and be replaced by, you know, some sort of robotics, you know, advanced technology that we, that we had created? Um, because, as you said, some people just say, well, we're just this blip in, you know, a, a vast, you know, cosmos uh, going on through billions of years. Uh, why should we privilege our particular moment in the sun over what may come after us? What, what's, what, why is it just a sort of sentimental attachment to, to humans? What is it, Martin? Well, I mean, I, I suppose as a kind of chauvinism, being a human being myself. I mean, I do, I do care about our species, and uh, um, uh, I uh, um, admire the beauty and wonder of this world and its variety, etc., in which uh, we have evolved over a four billion year process and I think uh, we want to cherish this um, but nonetheless in the broader perspective um, there may be all kinds of life out there already even more wonderful than the earth and there could be descendants if you think on timescales of millions of years not just uh, centuries uh, descendants of humans who also are, are very different so I think in the grand cosmic perspective uh, then we, we may be just a blip but uh, uh, I think um, we are entitled to a bit of chauvinism for the human species. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of drives your particular con concern, John, for, for seeing humans flourish rather than, you know, some robot ancestors of ours flourish? Well, I think that um, astronomers and other thinkers like Martin Rees who don't believe in any kind of fundamental meaning actually have a problem because there's a famous quote by the physicist Weinberg who said, the more the universe is comprehensible the more it seems pointless and it's that as we talked earlier about this human longing for meaning for longing for significance and so I I think that um, we need some bigger story than just well you know we happen to be a sort of cosmic accident which happened to evolve for completely meaningless reasons and we happened by a great fluke to enjoy it and then we went out bonk you know, that, that I think there is a deep hunger for something more than that. Martin? Um, I mean, I, I think I, I disagree in two respects. First, first um, uh, I think we can make our own meaning in lives. I don't feel my life is meaningless. I think most, most people can make a meaning in life and uh, uh, look at human achievements um, and try and ensure that we improve things. That's one thing. Um, the second point is that e even if we would like the... Um, universe to have a meaning uh, that doesn't mean it does uh, so our wishes are not the same as the reality um, so uh, that's why I don't sympathize with the with these views uh, but I think we've got to make the best meaning we can and uh, we certainly uh, know that there's a huge gap indeed I think a widening gap between the way the world is and the way it could be and our aim should be to narrow that gap and I think we should do that as human beings um, and uh, I don't think um, any perception about what is happening in the wider cosmos should diminish our motivation to make meaning here on Earth. John, any response to that? Well, it, I, 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 st I still struggle with um, how you can have... I mean, I think what Martin is expressing is a view which is often uh, said, is that basically ethics, morality... Uh, all of these are just human inventions, which our clever human minds sort of invent. You know, we invent that certain things are good and certain things are evil. We pretend that it matters whether you love people or whether you torture them. Uh, but actually it doesn't. These are just stories we tell ourselves. There is no fundamental linkage between morality and r reality out there. And I, I think most people really would would struggle with that and, and my own belief you know as a christian is that actually morality is objective it's it's out there we don't invent it we discover it we discover what is real we discover what is true we discover what love means well of course there's some people who think it like kant who thought it was objective but that doesn't mean that uh, it involves a god uh, so I think there's a separate question of uh, the extent to which uh, ethics is objective rather than subjective 
from the question of whether it's imposed by a god. And then, of course, there's a question of uh, um, is the statement that God is good a tautology or not? Uh, so I, I think uh, there are all these deep debates, and I'm not an expert in any of them, but I don't think uh, um, we need to uh, abandon the idea of uh, improving people's lives by their own perceptions, um, simply because we don't have any religious beliefs. What the, the Christian understanding of what it means to be human is, it, it, it explains the fact that there seems to be this mysterious link between us as these carbon-based life forms on a particular blue blob in the galaxy and this vast universe out there. And that there is some kind of correspondence between what goes on in my mind and what is going on in reality. And that's the Christian answer for that is because we are made in God's image and therefore my mind is capable of thinking after the mind of the creator. That there is a great mind behind reality and my puny little human mind is capable in some highly limited and of course, I mean, I hear what Martin is saying. Nonetheless, there is some kind of correspondence between my mind and the mind of the creator. I think what Martin has to say is actually, as far as he knows, there is no mind behind the universe, and it's just an amazing fluke that this little carbon-based life form manages to do all these extraordinary things, including developing intelligence, um, reaching out, exploring the cosmos. And, and the question is, which of those two stories makes more sense? Well, I mean, I, I certainly think it, it, it is remarkable that the, hu that the human brain which hasn't changed very much since our ancestors roamed the African savanna and knew about the everyday world, has made as much progress as it has in understanding the cosmos and the micro world of the quantum. I think that is, that is remarkable. And of course, had that not been the case, we wouldn't have technology. Um, but uh, the brain has this. Uh, but of course, we don't know where you're unique in the universe. There could be others, um, uh, civilizations out there in space thinking just the same thoughts as you, thinking they're unique. Uh, so we just d don't know that. <laughs>